Scoot fam, Mike, COE at New Scooters for Less. I've got Brad, service manager here. Today we're gonna do a how-to video on how to change a rear tire on a genuine buddy. Now if you're in the Gainesville area, a lot of times, I mean, you can see all the construction going up. That's usually one of the biggest reasons we have to do these tire changes is because they pick up a puncture, a nail, a screw, or something like that. It's actually very rare that they have to come in for uh, just general wear. Uh, is that usually what you see? Yeah, I mean, the Genuine Buddy and the Rough House, again, they're one of our you know, best-selling scooters that we have in terms of reliability, and, and, and I rarely see them in for like a, a defect or a, a functioning issue. Most of the time, it's because you know those brake pads are wearing down, or, or those tires, obviously, you can hit a nail, there's a lot of construction in Gainesville, but also, it's just over time, you know, you drive it all, all over the place. It's one of those scooters that you can hit on 34, on 13th, on, on the faster roads, because they do go a little bit quicker. So we see them in for these kind of jobs a lot. So today we're gonna go go ahead and show you how to do this tire change. We're gonna break it up in three different parts. Uh, kind of show you what happens if you bring the scooter in for us and we do the whole job. What would happen if you just wanna take the wheel off and bring it to us. Uh, and then how to do it by hand if maybe you're watching this outside of the Gainesville area and you just wanna figure out how to do it uh, with, the, with the mechanical spoons. We're gonna show you how to do that as well. So uh, hope you keep watching and uh, hope it's helpful for you. here with our genuine buddy scooter. Brad, what's the first step? All right, so when you're starting to change a tire, we gotta remove this exhaust. To do that, underneath your, the, the header bolts holding the exhaust in are gonna be a 10 millimeter. So grab your 10 millimeter wrench and loosen those up. I've already done that. So you should be finger loose, so I'm just gonna loosen them off with my fingers now. Um, right under here. And they look just like that. Again, 10 millimeter to get those header nuts off. Now, once we move to the exhaust bracket, these are gonna be 12 millimeters, and I'm just using my regular socket to get those off. We're gonna have two of these. Loose enough, you can twist them out by hand as well. Be careful um, with this last one. Once it falls, this exhaust is loose, so if I don't have my hand here to support, gonna fall right off. So okay. just gonna go ahead and ease it on off. It does have this secondary recirculation tube. We can just pop that off for now. All right, so now that we have the exhaust off, um, we wanna go ahead and use our impact to get the wheel lock nut off. It's a 24. Um, so if you have air tools and a compressor and we have our thunder gun here, this what we use obviously you can do this by hand it's a little bit more difficult that way um, so if you have the advantage of using power tools you can take advantage of it well while he's doing that i'll go ahead and show you we have back, back in my day uh, we used to have to do it by hand the way to, the best way to do that is to go ahead and get it off the kickstand so the rear, rear wheel is on the ground and then you can have somebody just squeeze the rear brake so that wheel doesn't move. And then you're gonna to wanna to get the longest breaker bar you can with that 24 millimeter socket attached to it so you can get it in one fell swoop. It definitely can be done, but air tools are your friend. If you got them, you're gonna to wanna to use those. All right, you got that off? Yep, so, so this is off. One of the other things um, that we haven't mentioned that you might wanna try, depending on how bad your uh, rear brake is, the rear brake drum sits right inside this wheel well. So if it's super worn down and super needs to be replaced essentially, it's not a bad idea to loosen that cable and it'll help your tire slide off. You can loosen this up a little bit on this side. So if you've eaten up a lot of your cord here, as this tightens down, that brake gets smaller and smaller. So when it's nice and loose, it'll slide right off. You may have to lift this lip up a little bit, the tire will come right off. There's our wheel. So whether you're doing this job at home or you're doing it in the shop, one thing that's important to note is now that this wheel is off, you can actually uh, see the rear drum brakes. It might go ahead. It might be a good time to go ahead and replace those as you're doing this to kind of save on some of your labor costs or save on your time. Now, Brad, how often do you recommend doing the rear brakes? It really depends per rider. I would say most of the time we're changing them every 2,000 to 3,000 miles. Just really depends on on how you brake and that type of thing. I remember one specific case with a rough house. We had a guy who actually broke his left hand and it was having. He was still able to brake okay, but it wasn't as much on this hand obviously so he was breaking a lot with this front and he was re replacing those like every 1500 miles so if you're if you're doing it if one brake specific because you have an injury or, or you just 
feel more comfortable doing one or the other, you're gonna replace that a little bit more often. So it's definitely once you get comfortable riding, start working those in and, and wearing those brakes evenly. So definitely try to save on some of that labor, save on some of your time, check those rear brakes when you're doing this rear tire job, uh, just make sure they don't need to be replaced. All right, so now we've got the tire off of our genuine buddy. Uh, we've come in here to our heavy machinery room where we have the tire changing machine. Obviously, if you're watching this at home, maybe you don't have one. We're just gonna walk you through how we do this here at the shop. So Brad, why don't you show them? Cool deal. So first thing again, remove that uh, ballastin element there. If it's in there, that's gonna create havoc because it kind of is a seal as well. So the first thing we wanna do is actually pop the bead and get the, the tire loose off the rim. And the way we do that, just with some, uh, one of these guys. So we put our, this tool right here on the side of the machine is actually going to press into the tire and take it off the rim for us. Again, try to get a little gap in between your rim. You don't want this to hit the rim. It might dent it. Okay. See, just like that, it's going to push it right off the rim. Release that pedal. Walk it around and do this side. Same thing. Watch your fingers. Alrighty, once you're done with that, you should have a nice unsealed rim and tire. Um, this is where it becomes a little tricky. If you've never used one of these, definitely get someone who has. It's, um, you don't want to get your fingers pinched anywhere. This is a good way to lose a finger if you've never done something. So, whenever you're if you're working with new machinery, take all the precautions you can. Right. Actually, another good tip is um, I'm actually going to spray this and lubricate it up as we get it seated on here. So the first thing is let's get it locked into place on our tire machine. Right. You should be able to move the tire like so. The rim should be pretty stationary. Um, like I said, whenever we use the machine, it's nice to go ahead and lubricate it up so the, the rubber on the tire just kind of slips right off the, the metal rim. What kind of lubricant are you using? Um, this one's just kind of a greaser, so it's just going to be really slippery. You can also use, we use soap and water all the time, but just something that's really going to get slick. Alright, once you've got your tire nice and wet, it'll uh, go ahead and slide easier. We're going to go ahead and line up our machine here. Lock that into place, and that's going to help us remove it. We're going to use our spoons or forks here. Uh, first step is you want to put this tire in and get this bottom lip up over. So, I'm going to go inside the tire. You see if you can't grab that bottom. I always stick my finger down here to feel that I have it. And then just pop it right over that, that seam. Once you're up, you just kind of want to keep your hands on the outside. Again, it's going to be rotating. You don't want to pinch anything but it should get this off the rim completely now. Once it pops off, slide it right over. So now we have our rim here. We're going to put the tire back on the rim for our replacement. So at this point, it's a great time to go ahead and inspect your valve stem. They're, they're held in on the rim by just a piece of rubber, and over time that rubber starts to crack and dry rot, so you can it'll also start leaking air out of that. So even if you replace it, the tire with a brand new tire, um, you can still go flat. If you notice that's happening, check that valve stem. It might just be leaking air right out of there. Um, the only other possibility at that point would be a cracked rim if that wasn't the issue. Alright, so when you're ready to put your new tire back on, um, I like to go ahead and use my lubricant again and hit that, hit that rim so everything slides on easily. Uh, so go ahead and just spray it. Try to get all the walls, then you don't have to worry about it ripping into the tire, or much worse, the rim. Um, the biggest thing when you're putting and changing tires is checking your direction. Most things have a direction of rotation whenever you're putting them on. So when you see the direction drive this way, you definitely don't want to put the rim on like this and put it back on your scooter. It doesn't have the right spray for in terms of water if it's raining. So that could actually cause a wreck. So be very careful. Make sure you got that direction right. We'll go and install. Again, I like to lubricate everything. So hit the, hit the wheel, hit the rim, and that'll make your life a lot easier. So this first lift is pretty easy. Um, 
you're just kind of trying to get that bottom lip around the top of the rim. Um, a lot of times you can do this by hand. I like to do the smaller tires by hand anyway, because it helps to, uh, it's, easy, it's just easy to get it on, so you don't have to worry about screwing it up. Okay, we already got that bottom lip on. Okay. Like, I mean, the way I set it up anyway is kind of walk my hands around. I can literally do this one by my hands just because it's nice and uh, lubricated and the, and the rubber is willing to work with me. If you have a really tight rubber, sometimes it won't work as easily as that just did. Alright, so we should be on. We can go ahead and release. And then we just want to inflate our tire. Alright, so now we're going to show you how to change this tire by hand. Brad and I have done a couple of these before, but we've decided it would be a good, uh, good opportunity to introduce Kevin to our street fam. He's actually worked at uh, a couple scooter shops before, uh, so he's a, he's a good person to show you how this is done. He's going he's gonna to do all the work, Brad's going to just kind of walk you through the steps here. So, guys, get to it, bud. Alright, so obviously the first thing we want to do again is pop the bead, so we're going to put some pressure on the tire. When you got Hulk skills like uh, Kevin here, you can put all your weight into it and hopefully pop that guy. Especially if it's a scooter tire. Now car tire is a little bit thicker, that's going to be a whole different monster. But a scooter tire should be something that we could actually, you should be able to do this in your garage if you have enough time and, and strength. Uh, so now that we have the, the tire loose now off the bead, that's what you're looking for. You just want to be able to get your fingers kind of in here, but just don't get them pinched anyway. Um, you should be able to squeeze the tire pretty easily, there's no pressure holding it on. So now we're going to use our forks here and uh, create some leverage. The biggest thing you want to try and do is get the fork under one lip of the actual rubber and um, work that over and over again on, onto the rim. So as he pulls one side up, he's going to take the other fork, kind of work it a little bit further over. If you get too far, it's going to be too hard to get that rubber over. So if you get a little bit too far over, just work it back closer to that first fork. And then just as you work it up, he'll be able to go around the entire rim. Um, obviously this is a soft metal, but we can still put enough weight on it. He's holding it down with his foot, so don't feel free, don't feel, feel afraid to actually stand on the rim. Now if you are in your garage or something, try to put a mat down or something like that. You don't want to put concrete, then you might be scraping up the rim, um, that kind of thing. So take all those precautions. But as we see here, he's getting the lift up. It's just going to work it all the way around. And then we'll do that same thing for the second lift. Again, be really careful when you're working with the actual metal forks there because, you know, these lips are, it is soft metal. I mean, you can bend it pretty easily. Um, if you happen to bend it and, you're, and you're, 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 your tire actually won't seat correctly on the rim, um, you know, unfortunately, that stuff like that does happen in a shop. So feel free, you know, you might have to grab a little rubber mallet or a hammer and just start, start pounding it out and trying to get that to seat correctly. Now we got, he got that first lip all the way up, he's working that second one now. So placing that first fork in, you're just going on completely under it and trying to get the leverage over. And then we'll just kind of do that same thing, just slowly work it around the rim. Eventually once you get enough of the rubber piece over, the rim should fall right out or you can be able to pull it out with your hands. The second lip's obviously a little bit harder because you're digging under that first lip and trying to get completely under it in order to pop it right over the rim. But, but as you get more and more of it, it'll become easier for you. Alright, at this point you've got about half the tire off that rim on the bottom lip. And then like I said, once you get it out about that far, the rim will just kind of fall off. <laughs> So as you can see, a little bit of a workout for you. It can be a little difficult, especially if you don't have the right tool. Even if you do and you've done this for a while, it can always present a couple different tricks and barriers. Um, whether New Scooters for Less is your local dealer, uh, service shop, or maybe you're watching this from out of town, uh, sometimes you can just pick up the phone and call a tire shop. They might even do this for you for free, just charge you a little bit of labor for the time it takes you to do it with a machine or something like that. But you definitely have that as an option. We did just want to go ahead and show you how to do it if you are that kind of person who wants to do it at home. There's our two pops, so we know we're sealed. We'll still hear some air come out of there, but um, it's not going to be loosening or sealing, unsealing your bead. The last thing we want to do is put our 
put our valve stem element, core element back in there. Tighten it up. Now we can actually pump it up with our actual gauge. I have to work it back and forth a little bit. But you want to have your uh, final drive axis come out about an inch or so. I'm not sure what the reading is. Most of the time it says it on the tires, but 35 PSI is the way you want to go. Ready. So now at this point we're ready to throw our exhaust back on and get this job done. So um, when, when we took it up, these nuts off, or these screws off, they're 12s, but the longer one is your bottom one. It's going to hold your bottom bracket on. Then once you get it into place, just try to hold it underneath. Kind of line it up, put your bottom screw in first. Kind of get it some finger tight on there. Enough to hold it to where you can put the top one in. And we're just gonna put our um, header pipe screws back on. Um, okay, so I got this finger tight. You just want to go ahead and take your 10 millimeter again, give it another little torque, and make sure it's nice and tight on there. Again, all these screws are righty tighty. Nice and tight. And I just do one, one more around all the other bolts that are holding this guy on, make sure it's nice and secure. And the last thing I'm gonna do is re hook up my recirculation tube for our filter. All right, so to wrap things up, we showed you an in-depth look on how to change the rear tire of a genuine buddy. Uh, again, just to kind of go through it, like if you want to bring it to the shop, what we usually charge is 45 minutes of labor plus the cost of the tire. If you do want to take the tire off and bring it to us just to have us uh, work it on the tire machine, we're only going to charge 15 minutes of labor there. Uh, and then if you're watching at home and want to do it by yourself, uh, we kind of showed you how to do that. We'll include some Amazon links in the bio for some tire spoons and other kind of special tool tooling you might need for that job. Uh, that pretty much wraps that up. Brad, do you have any other tips for our, our viewer family? Um, the only the other thing I would like to mention is, you know, as we get a lot of customers coming in for our shop, is the biggest thing I see in related relation to tires is just tire pressure. Um, people just don't check it as often as they need to. I mean, I would recommend every three weeks here in Florida is a good good gauge on to check your tire pressure. You want to keep them at this this model right here. You want to keep it 35 psi. That's what most of our scooters are. Um, but if, if you're riding, you can always check your frame. That's going to be printed on there. It's also printed on the tire itself. Um, one of the biggest things is if you're ever driving and you're feeling your scooter kind of pulling one way or the other, most nine times out of ten, I'd say it's low tire pressure, and that can actually create cracks in the wall and create you know more problems than if you just check your tire pressure regularly. You kind of avoid that cost. So you know, stay on top of it. One other big tip is because we're in Florida and obviously other places in the country, as it gets cold. Like right now, it's middle of summer. You can check this every three to four weeks and be okay. When it gets cold and it's you know 30 degrees in the morning and 100 in the afternoon, that really tends to mess with the with the uh, with the air inside the tire. So I would recommend even checking it more often when it, whenever you get to that time of year. Never gonna be wrong for checking it too many times. Again, if you're here in the Gainesville area and you just want to ride a ride on by these scooters for less, we'll actually check it for you, no cost. We want to make sure that you're taking care of your scooter the best way possible. Absolutely. If you have any questions, feel free to reach us at 352-336-1271. Uh, or you can reach us by email at service at nsvl.com. Check out more vlogs at nsvl.tv, and we'll see you next time. Later.